The stick of the word is somebody that I've known for many, many, many years. Uh, since the year 2000, we have served the Lord together in different parts of this world where the Lord has opened the doors for us. We have traveled to many nations. Uh, the Lord has been very gracious to open doors for us. And uh, she's one of those people who has a passion for the lost, who loves uh, the vulnerable people, the orphans, the widows. Uh, she just wants to see the gospel being taken to where, where people have really not had it. And, uh, and so the Lord gave her some uh, words that uh, define her ministry as beautiful feet. Beautiful feet. Uh, because that's all she cares about, just the feet that takes the gospel wherever it needs to go. And she also happens to be the international director and one of the founders of ILI, whom many of us know so much about. She's one of those who are there when the vision was conceived and birthed and seen it grow as a baby to what it is today. So please uh, join me to welcome uh, Joy Griffin to end uh, the interpreter team uh, as a team to come over and bring the word. Joy, I want you to know, Joy, I want you to know that we are giving you the best interpreter in Kenya. Yeah. Ever. I, I actually don't know any other interpreter who is as good as Pastor Ken. Pastor Ken is the one who interpreted for your friend Dr. Wayne Dossett. And uh, Dr. Wayne Dossett was able to preach without struggling and trying to ask uh, what is his name because he hears you the first time. So he has an anointing for interpreting for Wazungu. So panic not. Ken, thank you so much for coming. And you know this man has traveled all the way from Mombasa throughout the night to be here today. Amen. Thank you so much. We love you and always enjoy something together. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. What a blessing. Amen. 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 Uh, good morning. What a privilege it is to be with you today. We look around and see the hand of God and what He has done. So we praise Him. Uh, Pastor Phyllis, thank you for the invitation to be here. I'm so honored. I bring greetings to all of you from my husband and our children, Hannah and Caleb. As well as the, the whole Ely family around the world, IOI family. And from many of your brothers and sisters in the United States who have been praying for the building of this this church as well as maybe helping financially to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I want to say uh, thank you to Pastor Ken for being so generous and helping us to have this church and this ministry here today. And I'm so excited to meet you, sisters and brothers. Thank you for the worship team. Thank you to the band. For sacrificing and inviting others all around the community here in Guerrero to come. Kwa sababu ya na pia for God's presence today. I want to tell you one of my favorite scriptures in all the Bible. It's found in the Old Testament in the book of Second Chronicles. It's found in the Old Testament in the book of Second Chronicles. 
you or me, if we are available to him, he will help us, he will fight for us. So that is what has happened with Bishop David and Sister Joyce. And I look around the room and many of you are pastors and leaders in other churches with Glory Outreach Assembly. But our sister Phyllis also raised her hand and said, Here I am, Jesus. And right now, today, we are in this building in Marrera because of her being available and saying, Here I am, you can. So we are here today celebrating and rejoicing. But this is an example of how God wants to use all of us wherever we live and whatever ministry he's placed us in. Na huu ndio mfano wa jinsi Mungu anavyotaka kufanya nasi katika kila huduma ambapo ametuweka pale. Now in the Old Testament katika agano la kale in the book of Deuteronomy katika kitabu cha kumbukumbu la Torati I want to read a passage that is near to the time that Moses is about to go back to heaven it's nataka, the end of Moses life nataka kusoma maandiko ambapo mahali ambapo Musa karibu wakati wake wa kuondoka hapa duniani and God is talking to his people na Mungu anazungumza na watu wake and he's talking about their memories na anazungumza kuhusu kumbukumbu zao god is concerned about memories mungu ana haja sana na kumbukumbu zetu all throughout the bible god says for us to remember sasa katika biblia yote mungu anasema tukumbuke he says remember whose you are anasema kumbuka wewe ni wanani he says remember where you have come from anasema kumbuka mahali ambapo umetoka i have brought you out of darkness into light nimekutoa katika giza nikakuleta kwenye nuru remember what i did for you on the cross kumbuka nilichokufanyia pale msalabani remember to love and be kind to one another kumbuka kupenda na kuwa mkarimu kwa wenzako so he is reminding his people here in Deuteronomy chapter 6 anakumbusha watu wake katika kumbukumbu la Torati sura ya sita. You will hear when we read he is he is reminding them of the Ten commandments. Utasikia tunaposoma anawakumbusha amri zile kumi. And he's giving them some last instructions before Joshua is going to be the leader to take them into the new promised land. Na pia kuwapatia maagizo mapya kabla Yoshua kuwapeleka katika nchi ya ahadi. So beginning with verse 1. Kwa hivyo tunaanza pale sura ya kwanza kumbukumbu la Torati 6 mstari wa kwanza. Of chapter 6. Ya sura ya sita. These are the commands, decrees and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. Or do you want to just read that? Would that be good? If, I can read in Swahili. If you read the first through the ninth verses and then 22 to 25. Okay, read in Please. Swahili. Yes. Okay, please. Basi nitasoma kwa Kiswahili kumbukumbu la Torati sura ya sita mstari wa kwanza hadi wa tisa Maandiko yanasema hivi, na hii ndio sheria na amri na hukumu alizoziamuru Bwana Mungu wenu. Mfundishwe, mpate kuzitenda katika nchi ile mnayoivukia kuimiliki. Upate kumcha Bwana Mungu wako kushika amri zake zote na sheria zake ninazo kuamuru. Wewe na, mw- na mwanao na mwana wa mwanao siku zote za maisha yako tena siku zote siku zako ziongezwe sikiza basi e Israeli ukaangalie kuzitenda upate kufanikiwa mpate kuongezeka sana kama Bwana Mungu wa baba zako alivyokuahidi katika nchi katika nchi ijayo maziwa na asali sikiza e Israeli Bwana Mungu wetu Bwana ndiye mmoja nawe mpende bwana Mungu wako kwa moyo wako wote na kwa roho yako yote na kwa nguvu zako zote na maneno haya ninayo kuamuru leo yatakuwa katika moyo wako nawe wafundishe watoto wako kwa bidii na kuyanena uketipo katika nyumba yako na utembeapo njiani na ulalapo na uondokapo yafunge yawe dalili juu ya mkono wako nayo yatakuwa kama utepe katika katikati ya macho yako tena yaandike juu ya miimo ya nyumba yako na juu ya malango 
yako Ay, 22 to 25 Ay, 22 hadi 25 maandiko inasema Bwana akaonya akaonya ishara na maajabu makubwa mazito juu ya Misri na juu ya Farao na juu ya nyumba yake yote mbele ya macho yetu Aka, akatutoa huko ili kututia huku apate kutupa nchi aliyowaapia baba zetu Bwana akatuamuru kuzifanya amri hizi zote tumche Bwana Mungu wetu tuone mema siku zote ili atuhifadhi hai kama hivi leo tena itakuwa haki kwetu tukitunza kufanya maagizo haya yote mbele ya Bwana Mungu wetu kama alivyotuagiza Thank you. Amen. So, so God always has a purpose that is so much bigger than you and me when he calls us to do something. Wakati wote Mungu ako na kusudi kubwa kuliko vile tunavyofikiria wakati ule ambapo anapotuita. In the book of Genesis when he called Abraham, he had so many more people in mind than just Abraham. Ah katika kitabu cha mwanzo wakati alipokuwa anamuita Abraham, Mungu alikuwa na watu wengi ambao angewaita kando na Abraham. He had you and me in mind. Alikuwa pia na wewe na mimi katika mawazo yake. Every person here in this sanctuary. Kila mmoja wetu katika jengo hili. Because God is out for the salvation of the world. Kwa sababu Mungu kusudi lake ni wokovu wa ulimwengu wote. Let me tell you how God sees his world today. Wacha nikwambie jinsi ambavyo Mungu anavyoona ulimwengu wake leo. January 31st. 2022 Januari 31 mwaka 2022 is the last day we will say 2022 ndipo tutasema mara ya mwisho 2022 Okay who who knows how many people are we are told live on planet earth what is the population of the earth right now who knows the answer ni nani anajua dunia iko na watu takriban wangapi anybody guess kuna mtu ako na hiyo sub 7 billion 7 billion is that is he saying 7 seven? seven actually yes 7.2 billion actually just about 2 weeks ago Another baby was born and we are now at 8 billion people in this world. 7 billion for many years and now we are 8 billion people. Tulikuwa na watu bilioni 7 kwa muda mrefu lakini sasa tuko watu bilioni 8. So this is how God sees his world today. Kwa hivyo hivi ndivyo Mungu anavyoona ulimwengu wake leo. Now one third of this world are Christians. Ya kwamba They are different cultures, different languages, different denominations, but they would say they are believers in Jesus. Ah, hasa hawa ni watu ambao wanaamini Yesu. Watu wa wa dini tofauti tofauti lakini wanamtambua Yesu. And there's about two and a half billion people, another third of the world, who have maybe heard the name of Jesus, but for whatever reason they said no, I'm not interested. Na kuna watu wengine milioni mbili na nusu ambao wengine wamesikia habari za Yesu lakini kabisa hawataki habari za Many of those people live right around this area in Morera. Na watu wengi wa hao wengine wako katika sehemu hii ya Morera. And still today there's still about one third of God's world. Na pia siku ya leo kuna sehemu ya ya, ya moja kwa tatu kwa ulimwengu wa Mungu. About two and a half billion people. What? Who have never heard the name of Jesus? So they don't know there's a Christmas we just celebrated. They do not know there is an Easter resurrection. Now, they do not know there is an Easter resurrection. They have never heard. So, did you? You got that one third of the world are believers like us. Why The reason there is need for this church is because still two thirds of the world are not Christians. Now, the reason there is need for this church is because still two thirds of the world are not Christians. Now, the reason there is need for this church is because still two thirds of the world are not Christians.
kabisa watoto wetu tukiwa nyumbani tukiwa tumeketi tukiwa njiani ndio hili hili njili iweze kuendelea and God clearly says the reason that we have a building here is so that in the future when your children and your children's children say what is that building what what are these stones what does this mean ni ili baadaye miaka ijayo watoto wa watoto wetu watakapokuwa wakiuliza hili jengo ni la nini madhabahu ni ya kazi gani is for you and me to remember ni kwa ili wewe na mimi kukumbuka and to share with those future generations god's faithfulness na kuweza kushuhudia vizazi vitakavyokuja juu ya uaminifu wa Mungu and to remember this day as we are dedicating all of this to god na kukumbuka siku hii ya leo tunapotia wakfu jengo hili kwa sababu ya Mungu so you can explain to the neighbors to the people that are going by what happens here ya kwamba tunaweza kuelezea majirani zetu na marafiki zetu ni nini ambacho kilichokuwa kinaendelea hapa who we honor and worship na ni nani ambaye tunamheshimu na kumwabudu so god is saying in this passage i'm giving you an opportunity to transfer your faith to another generation na kile mungu anachokisema hapa katika andiko hili ni ya kwamba ametupatia nafasi ya kuweza kupokeza imani yetu kwa kizazi kingine and to those who have never heard hasa pia kwa wale ambao hawajawahi kusikia I want to quickly tell you about um uh, the Chinese. Ningependa niwaambie kwa upesi kuhusu wale wa kutoka China. Many of you have seen the China. Correct? Wengi wenu tumeona wa China hapa. They seem to be everywhere. Inaonekana kana kwamba wako kila mahali. You're laughing. They're everywhere. <laughs> wako kila mahali. I remember the first 10 years ago maybe. When, Nakumbuka kama miaka kumi hivi iliyopita. When the roads here in Kenya were not they were not as nice as they are now. <laughs> Wakati barabara za hapa Kenya hasiku, hazikuwa nzuri kama jinsi zilivyo nzuri sasa. And suddenly there were Asian people here working on the roads with their their little asian hats na ghafla kukawa na hawa watu kutoka kule asia ambao walianza kujenga barabara zetu na zile kofia zao kubwa kubwa and bish described to me that that kenya had hired the chinese to come and build these very big expressways big fancy roads na askofu alinielezea kwamba wa kenya waliweza kuwachukua wale wa china kuja kututengenezea hizi barabara kubwa tulizonazo sasa. So that is a good thing we can move faster to places because of the roads. Na kwa hivyo sasa tunaweza kupenya kwa upesi kwa sababu ya mabarabara. But I am told there are also some problems with the Chinese. Is that correct? Lakini pia niliambiwa kuna shida ambazo wa China wako nayo. Yes. Ni kweli? Yes. Aha. Well, I want to tell you something about the Chinese that maybe you and I did not think about. Ningependa niwaambie kitu kuhusu wa China ambacho pengine wewe haukuwa unafikiria kuhusu. And that is about their souls. Hiyo ni kuhusu ya nafsi zao. And actually many of them are right here with you. Na hasa wengi wao wako pamoja nasi hapa. They are not far across the ocean in the country of China. They are here in Kenya. Hawako mbali katika nchi ya Uchina, lakini wako pamoja nasi katika nchi ya Kenya. Now I'll tell you when with the ministry of ILI for many years we had prayed to be able to get into communist China. Kupitia kwa huduma ya ILI tumekuwa tukiomba kwa miaka mingi jinsi ambavyo tukavyoingia katika ile nchi ya Uchina. You know what this word communist means. Tunaelewa maana ya neno communist ni nini? Yes. Tunaelewa. Yes. Some of us. Some some. Okay. You in Kenya and me in America are very blessed because we are free to worship here today to talk about Jesus. Nyinyi mlio hapa Kenya na sisi tulio Marekani tumebarikiwa kwa sababu tuko na uhuru wa kuweza kuabudu kwa njia yoyote ile. We have fairly fairly honest and free elections to elect representatives of ourselves. Hata katika uchaguzi ambao tunaofanya katika nchi zetu tuko na nafasi nzuri ambao iko na upesi wa kuchagua kwa jinsi tunavyopenda. Communism is a system that is very evil. It's wicked. Lakini mfumo wa kikomunisti ni mfumo ambao umejibana hauko na uwazi. In a communist country the people are not free 
to come and worship and gather together as we are today. Katika nchi ya kikomunisti watu hawawezi kupatana kama jinsi tunakutana na kuabudu kwa pamoja kwa wepesi. Military guns and military machine that forces people to do exactly what they tell them to do. Wale wanajeshi wanahakikisha ya kwamba wanalazimisha watu kufanya jinsi wao wanavyotaka. For example, the communist would say to Pastor Phyllis, this is the job that you will take. You will get on this bus and go to this factory and this is where you will work the rest of your life. At the end of the day, you come back to your house right here. You do not go down another street anywhere. Ni ya kwamba wanaweza kukuamurisha ya kwamba wewe kazi yako ni hii. Uwe ukiingia kwenye hili basi, unaenda unafanya kazi mahali fulani, ukimaliza unarudi kwa nyumba yako. Hakuna kutangamana na watu. To you other mamas, the guns are held at your head. Na uju. They say, Joyce, you get on this bus, go to this market to get your potatoes, you come back here to this place. Na wakati mwingine wana kushikia bunduki, wana kwambia uondoke, uenda katika soko fulani, ununue vitu viyako vye nyuma, na kisha kwa mda unaofa, uwe umerejia kwa nyumba lako. If you do not obey, then in front of you and your eyes, your children, your husband, your neighbors will be shot, raped, killed in front of you so that you will obey what they tell you to do. Na basi kama hautati ile amri mbele ya macho yako na majirani zako, familia yako wataweza kukupiga risasi au waangamize familia yako. A communist country is where the people, the citizens are controlled completely by the government. Katika nchi ya kikomunisti ni nchi ambayo watu wanatawaliwa na 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 serikali bila hiari yao wenyewe. There are no free elections like you just had in August here. Hakuna kule kufanya uchaguzi ambao ni wa wazi kama jinsi tuliyokuwa nao mwezi uliopita wa wanane. Any that you say you can be condemned for there is no free speech. Upa, mahali pale chochote unachokisema unaweza kuhukumiwa kwa sababu hakuna uhuru wa kusema so communism is very very evil kwa hivyo ule mfumo wa kikomunisti ni mwovu zaidi let me tell you i'm jumping i'm going to jump from china to russia just for a moment nataka niruke kutoka uchina niingie kule russia that is why Urusi. you have heard in the news about Russia in invading the country of Ukraine. You have all heard this, correct? The war that is happening there. Hivi majuzi tumesikia habari ya za jinsi Urusi iliweza kuingia kule katika nchi ya Ukraine na ikaweza kuwavamia. Yes, we all know this. Sisi si wote tumesikia hivyo. The reason, yeah. the reason is that Putin, the president of Russia, remembers when the Soviet Union controlled all of that part of the world it was communist sababu kubwa ni hii putin ambaye ndiye rais wa sasa wa urusi anakumbuka wakati nchi nyingi pale karibu na urusi walikuwa chini ya utawala wa urusi and in 1990 the the Soviet Union crumbled suddenly all those little countries became free na pale mwaka wa tisini ile umoja wa Soviet ikaweza kusambaratika na kwa hivyo nchi zikaweza kujitawala zikapata uhuru. It would be the first time in any of our lifetime any of us we had we would have all lived under communism all of our lives. Kama ingelikuwa ni jinsi walivyotaka kwa nyakati zile katika maisha yetu Urusi ama ile Soviet ingependa kutawala ulimwengu wote. So now 30 years later na sasa miaka 30 baadaye Putin is trying to take back over and control so that is why they're trying to take over Ukraine again Putin anajaribu sasa tena kuchukua utawala na ndio maana waliweza kuvamia Ukraine And the reason the Ukrainians are fighting back is that they have tasted freedom like you and I have. Na sababu ya Ukraine kutaka kupigana ni kwa sababu wameonja matunda ya uhuru ndio maana wanakataa. 
and they are willing to fight and die for freedom. Na wao wameamua na wangependa kupigana hadi wafe kwa sababu ya uhuru. To not go back to communism. Ili wasirudi chini ya mfumo huo wa kikomunist. Now let's go to China. Sasa turudi tena kule uchina. In 1947. Mwaka wa 47. A bad guy Kuna jamaa alikuwa muovu sana. A very bad leader named Mao Zedong. Ki, uh, ja, kiongozi ambaye alikuwa mbaya sana alikuwa anaitwa Mao Zedong. Became the leader of China. Akawa kiongozi wa Uchina. And he formed what is called the People's Republic of China. Na akaweza kubuni ule umoja wa Uchina, wa nchi ya Uchina. What that means is he made it a country. Hiyo inachomaanisha ni kwamba alifanya nchi ambayo ina utawala wa mfumo wa kikomunisti. So the people were no longer free. Hivyo watu hawakuwa huru tena. So he systematically closed churches, bulldozed down churches. Kwa hivyo kwa mpangilio akafunga makanisa yote. And the goal was so that the people would not be able to remember who God is. Na lengo kubwa ni ili watu wasijewahi kukumbuka Mungu ni nani. They thought that if they could destroy the buildings, the people would not remember God. Walifikiria ya kwamba watakapoharibu majengo yote ya makanisa, watu hawatakumbuka Mungu ni nani. But they underestimated the Holy Spirit. Lakini walifanya makosa kwa sababu hawakuelewa kazi ya Roho Mtakatifu. Because there were some believers that did what God said to do in the book of Deuteronomy to teach to their children even if they had to whisper and kwa, not speak out loud. Kwa sababu kuna waaminio waliofanya jinsi Mungu alivyoagiza katika neno lake, walifundisha watoto wao hata kama ni kwa ile sauti ya chini. So today now there has been 70 years of that oppression of communism in kwa, China. Kwa hivyo siku ya leo imechukua miaka sabini ya utawala ule wa kikomunisti where people cannot worship together like we are today mahali ambapo watu hawawezi kuabudu kwa pamoja kama jinsi tunavyofanya hivi so we prayed and prayed to be able to get into communist china with the word of god kwa hivyo tukawa tukiomba na tukiomba ili Mungu atupe njia ya kuingia katika ile nchi ya uchina but it's very difficult lakini imekuwa ni ngumu sana for example maybe if if Pastor Harun and I written back and forth to each other for 15 years. Sasa kwa mfano kama mimi na mchungaji tumekuwa tukiandikiana kwa barua kwa miaka kama 15. And when he back I think that he is safe that maybe he is a Christian or he is a safe person. Sasa ninafikiria kwamba yeye ni mtu ambaye yuko mahali salama. Pengine yeye ni Mkristo ambaye yuko salama. But then one day he turns on me or I turn on him I turn him in and so his entire network gets killed Basi, they are Christians wakati ambapo tunaendelea kuandikiana siku moja mmoja wetu anageuka mwenzake alafu uh, wale wafuasi wote tuliokuwa tukishirikiana na wao so wanaangamizwa his network is not only his family or maybe even his local church it is all of us. It's all the other Christians that he knows. That's his network. Kwa hivyo ushirika wake sio yeye na familia yake peke yake, ni yeye pamoja na washirika wale ambaweza kufikia na wandugu wengine ambao wameambatana kwa pamoja. So remember the communists control them. They oppress them. So he is afraid to talk to the outside. Kwa hivyo wale wa communist kwa sababu wamewafinyilia anaogopa kuweza kuongea na watu walio nje So I'm coming to the Chinese here. Kwa hivyo nikija hapa kwa mchaina. But here is what happened for my first time to go to China. Ninaposikia jinsi kilichofanyika mara ya kwanza nilipoenda China. The Lord opened the door for me to go as a tourist to backpack on the Great Wall of China. Sasa Mungu akafungua mlango wangu kwenda kutembea kama mgeni kama mtalii katika ule ukuta ambao ni wa China. In a geography book you have seen that great wall. Naamini wote tumeona ule mkuta ukuta mrefu kabisa duniani wa China. It's thousands and thousands of miles long. Ah ni ukuta mrefu wenye maili nyingi sana. The country of China has one fifth 
of the entire population of the world. Nchi ya China ina sehemu ina sehemu moja kwa tano ya ya jumla ya watu wote wa wa dunia. 1.5 billion people live in China. Bilioni moja nukta tano ya watu wa, wa, wa dunia wa, wapo cha pale China. And now you all think that all the them live here in Kenya, right? <laughs> Na sisi huwa tunafikiria watu wote wako hapa Kenya. <laughs> but but so so God opened the door for me to go and I did backpack on the great wall of China but my goal was to meet with underground church leaders secretly after I did the backpack Sasa mimi nilikupokwenda pale kama mtalii lengo langu lilikuwa ni kuweza kukutana na viongozi wa mashirika haya ya Kikristo ya chini chini because we need to see each other face to face kwa sababu, instead of writing a letter kwa sababu tulihitaji tuonane uso kwa uso badala ya kuandikiana barua so the lord helped me make that happen kwa hivyo mungu akanisaidia na hiyo ikafanyika so i praise him na kwa hivyo namshukuru bwana tunaweza msaidie bwana help us be able to do ministry in china na sasa mungu ametusaidia kuweza kufanya huduma kule china but what i want to tell you is when i got into the taxi and was on my way back to the airport to go back to my family. Na sasa wakati nilipomaliza hiyo nikiingia kwenye taxi ndio ili niingie kwenye nirudi kwenye uwanja wa ndege nirudi nyumbani. Not many people speak English. Sio wengi wanaozungumza Kiingereza. The taxi driver could speak just a little English. Lakini yule mwendeshaji taxi angeweza kuongea Kiingereza kidogo. Nothing like my brother Ken. Asio hata haikaribi haikaribi kama yangu. But he could speak a little English. Lakini anaweza kunena Kiingereza kidogo. So I ask his name. Kwa hivyo nikamuuliza jina lake. He said his name is Ping. P I N G ping Akaniambia jina lake ni ping Like ping pong Kama ping pong ping You have ping pong Tuko na ping Here? pong So yeah. I'm telling you that to say please pray for ping Sasa na sasa ninawaambia kwamba muombee yule ping So I said my name is Joy Nikamwambia jina langu ni Joy Now in my mind I am remembering a paper that I signed sasa katika mawazo yangu ninakumbuka kuna mahali nilipotia sahihi because in order to get a visa to get inside the country I I, had, ili upate visa ya kuingia katika nchi ya Uchina I had to promise that I would not talk about two things lazima ningeahidi ya kwamba sitaongea kuhusu mambo mawili that I would not talk about any governments or any religions ya kwamba nisiongee juu ya serikali yoyote au dini yoyote and then the paper said if you do you will be arrested imprisoned tortured and killed na kale karatasi kanasema ya kwamba ukipatikana ukifanya hivyo utashikwa utafungwa na utadhulumiwa and that is what the communists do is na, to make you be afraid na hivyo ndivyo wa communist ufanya kukufanya ukae katika hali ya hofu so i'm in the car with ping and i realize i don't have much time to talk to him before i get to the airport na sasa nikafiki nikaangalia nikaona sina muda mrefu wa kuongea na yeye kabla tufike kwenye uwanja wa ndege so i thought ping might be a bad guy kwa hivyo nikafikiria pengine Ping anaweza kuwa ni mtu mbaya. If he is part of the Communist Party and I talk about God then I will never see my children again on earth. Kama yeye ni sehemu wa chama kinachotawala kule China, pengine sasa huenda akanishtaki na nisione familia yangu tena. But Ping probably is part of that world that's never even heard about Jesus. Na ping pengine ni sehemu ya wale walio katika ulimwengu ambao hawajawahi kusikia Yesu Kristo. So I was asking the Lord help to say. Kwa hivyo nikawa nikimwambia Bwana nisaidie kujua cha kusema. I said ping what do you believe? Nikamuuliza ping wewe unaamini nini? Because I did not say God or Jesus. Kwa sababu si kusema Mungu wala Yesu. And he said nothing akaniambia hakuna kitu ninachoamini akaniambia siamini chochote so that did not help me kwa hivyo hiyo haikunisaidia then i said oh, i thought jesus help. so i said ping what do you believe is going to happen to you when you die sasa nikamuuliza sasa wewe unaamini nini kitakachokufanyikia utakapokufa 
immediately ping responded hapo hapo ping aka akanijibu and i'm telling you this because many of the chinese that are here working in kenya believe this na sasa ninakuambia hivyo kwa sababu wengi wa wachina wanaokuja hata kufanya kazi hapa hapa kenya wanaamini hivi ping said akasema the government tells us that all chinese go to the fire sasa ya kwamba serikali huwa inawaambia ya kwamba wachina wote wakifa wanaenda motoni. All Chinese go to the fire. Wachina wote huenda motoni. Isn't that sad? Na hiyo si ya kuhuzunisha. And I said, "Oh, Ping." Nikamwambia Ping. I don't want to be disrespectful to your government or to anyone. Mimi sitaki kutokuwa na heshima kwa serikali wala kwa mtu awaye yote. But I want to tell you that God loves us so much and he has made it possible that you and I do not have to go to the fire. Lakini nataka nikwambia kwamba Mungu anatupenda sisi wote na hapendi awaye yote aweze kuingia kwenye moto. His eyes got big. Macho yake ikafunguka zaidi. He was, he was listening. Akawa anasikiliza. I said and he loves us so much he sent us his son Jesus. Na anatupenda sana alitutumia mwanae Yesu Kristo. Ping had never heard the name Jesus. Ping hakuwa amewahi kusikia jina la Yesu. It meant nothing to him. Haikuwa inamaanisha chochote kwake. It was kwake. completely foreign to him. Ilikuwa ni jambo la kigeni kabisa kwake. Just like the Chinese letters on a Chinese restaurant are to you or me. <laughs> Kama jinsi maandiko ama maandishi ya Kichina yalivyo kwako na kwangu. I said and God loves us and he sent us he wrote it down about his son in a book like a love letter. Nikamwambia Mungu anatupenda alituandikia uh, kitabu chake uh, barua za upendo wake kwetu. Never heard about a Bible. Hakuwa amewahi kusikia kuhusu Biblia. I said and he says God says if we search for him with all our heart we will find him. Na nikamwambia Mungu anasema tukimtafuta kwa mioyo yetu yote so, atapatikana kwetu. So I am going to pray to God that you will hunger and search for him. Kwa hivyo ninakuombea kwamba uwe na njaa na kiu ya Mungu na umtafute. Ping said she she. Ping akasema she she. I want to teach you a new word today in Nit, Chinese. Nitawafundisha neno mpya la Kichina. Okay, let's all practice. Haya sasa wacha tufanye mazoezi. It is she she. She she. She she. She she. Good. Very good. Very good. Missouri. Missouri. Missouri sana. Yeah, Missouri sana. That means thank you. Hiyo inamaanisha asante. So when you see a Chinese person you can say She she. <laughs> Baibo kimpatana na mchina mwambie she she. So Ping said thank you. Then I said when Ping I get, kasema, asanti. Na mimi nikamwambia when I get back to my country I'm going to get this book for you in your language and send it to you. Nikamwambia nitakutumia hiki kitabu kwa lugha yenu nitakutumia. He stopped me. Akaniambia a a wachia hapo. It will never come to me. Akaniambia hiyo haitawahi kunifikia. The communist government stops everything that comes into the country. Uh, uh, serikali ya kikomunisti huwa inasimamisha kila kitu kinachokuja katika nchi hii. So if you or I send a letter to someone in China it probably will not arrive there. The government communism stops every freedom that the people have. Kwa hivyo wewe ukituma barua au utume chochote katika nchi ya Uchina serikali huwa inazuilia. That is why the Chinese people that are here want to be here to work because at least they are free to walk around and talk. Na ndio maana wachina wanaokuja kufanya kazi katika nchi kama hii ya Kenya wanapendelea sana kwa sababu hapa wako na uhuru. But he said it will not come to me because the government will stop it. Akaniambia haitanifikia kwa sababu serikali haitakubali. I said well I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask the people in my country that know this God to pray that the book will get to you. Sasa nikamwambia basi kile nitakachofanya nitaomba huyo Mungu na watu wa nchi yetu ambao wanaomjua Mungu nitawaambia waombe ili apeane njia kitabu hicho kikufikie. Does, na nikamwambia kikikufikia nataka ukisome chote. Nikamwambia 
before you read all of it. Basi nikachukua karatasi nikamwandikia njia ya kupokea uokovu nikamwambia nenda na usome hizi. He stuck it in his back pocket and said sheshe. Akachukua akaweka kwa mfuko wake wa nyuma na akaniambia sheshe. But now we're at the airport. Na sasa tumefika katika uwanja wa ndege. And the officials with their guns are everywhere. Na sasa wale wanajeshi na na bunduki zao wako kila mahali. So talk anymore. Kwa hivyo sasa hatuwezi kuongea tena. So I went back to my country. Nikarudi tena kwa nchi yetu. I ordered the Bible in the Mandarin language, his language. Nikachukua nikaagiza Biblia na hiyo lugha yao ya kimandarini. I took a big box. Nikachukua boxi kubwa. And I went and got old newspapers. I put the Bible in the very bottom of the box and filled the box full of trash, just old papers. Nikachukua ile Biblia nikaiweka na magazeti mzee mzee nikajaza kwenye ile uh, ile uh, sanduku hoping that if the officials opened it they would not look in the bottom to find the bible nikitumaini ya kwamba wakati wale wanaochunguza wakiifikia wakipata ule mzigo hawatafikia biblia mahali ilipo and then i did what i thought was a smart move na basi nikafanya ni jambo nililofikiria ni jambo la busara my husband actually laughed at me in the beginning na mume wangu kwanza alinichekelea pale mwanzo but i went to a chinese restaurant nikaenda katika mkahawa wa kichina and i asked the chinese people there to label it in their language nikawaambia so it wouldn't look english nikawaambia waandike kwa kichina so they did na kwa hivyo wakaandika and then i mailed it sasa na basi nikaituma and some weeks passed and then some months passed na wiki kadhaa na miezi kadhaa ikapita and then in february basi mwezi wa pili an envelope came with no return address ba, nikapatwa nikapatiwa bahasha ambayo haikuwa na adresi ya, kuruji, ya kurejesha it was like it was in code <laughs> ilikuwa ni kana kwamba ni mambo yamewekwa yamefichwa envelope and these are the exact words from the letter na hapa ni ma, ma, maneno kamili yaliyotoka kwenye ile barua it said dear joy inasema dear joy i received the package nilipokea kifurushi chako Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I am reading the book with great interest. Ninasoma kitabu hiki kwa kutamani sana. I have many questions. Na nina maswali mengi sana. Thank you. Asante. Ping. Ping. Amen. So, Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. But my prayer has been Lakini ombi langu limekuwa that somebody with beautiful feet there in China would get into Ping's taxi and help invite him to a to a secret home fellowship. Ya kwamba mtu mwenye miguu ambao inayopendeza ataingia kwenye taxi ya Ping na muongoze katika yale mashirika ya kisiri ya Ukristo. Or that God's Holy Spirit will reveal himself to Ping. Ama na Roho Mtakatifu ajifunue mwenyewe kwa Ping. But I want to tell you lakini ningependa nikwambie What Ping reminds me of is millions of Chinese who have never heard about Jesus. Ya kwamba Ping huwa ananikumbusha jinsi ambavyo kuna mamilioni ya wachina ambao hawajawahi kumsikia Yesu. Millions of others all around the world and many tribal people even here in Kenya who have never ever heard the name of Jesus. Na mamilioni ya watu wengine katika ulimwengu mzima na hasa hata hapa Kenya ambao hawajawahi kusikia habari za Yesu. And I could tell you many more stories today. Na ninaweza kuwapatia hadithi nyingi zaidi. But I believe the reason God has planted this church here in this community. Na ninaamini sababu ya Mungu kupanda kanisa hili katika sehemu hii is to be a beacon and a light. Ni ili kuweza kuwa mnara na mwangaza and a voice like the band the, and the worship team a beautiful voice for Jesus na sauti kama vile bendi na wa, na viongozi wa, 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 wa sifa kwa sababu ya Yesu right here in Marera hapa Marera as well as all around the world na pia ulimwengu kote And actually we know that the Chinese part of the world has come to you rather than you going to the Chinese. Na pia tunajua ya kwamba Uchina umekuja ume kwetu. Kwa hivyo sio lazima tuende kwao kwanza. So I did not tell the China story to to make you feel sorry for the workers. I did to 
at the same time I did so that you feel sorry if they do not know about Jesus and I believe that we are responsible to go and tell them. Sikutaka niwaambie habari ya Uchina ili muweze kuwahurumia wale wa China jinsi wanavyofanya kazi lakini ni ili tukaweze kushikwa na hiyo hali ya kutaka waweze kufikiwa na injili. Today as we consecrate this building these stones. Na kwa hivyo wakati tunapotia wakfu jengo hili mawe haya. I pray they become memorial stones. Ninaomba yawe ni mawe ya kumbukumbu. For us to remember what God has done in our lives. Kwetu kuweza kukumbuka kile Mungu amefanya maishani mwetu. And to tell our children and grandchildren down the road why we worship our God. Ili tuweze kuambia vizazi vinavyokuja kazi ambayo Mungu amefanya maishani mwetu. And for this church to be an Acts 1:8 church. Na hili kanisa likawe kuwa ni kanisa ala, la matendo ya mitume sura ya kwanza mstari wa 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Ah uh, matendo ya mitume sura ya kwanza mstari wa 8. Jesus has resurrected and he is about to go back to heaven. Yesu amefufuka na yuko tayari kwenda mbinguni. The last thing he said to his followers was you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem right here Judea Samaria maybe those are the Chinese and the ends of the earth when you receive power from on high Na basi Yesu amefufuka yuko tayari kuondoka na jambo la mwisho analowaambia wafuasi wake ni ya kwamba sasa mtakuwa uh, wafuasi wangu mtaweza kuwa washuhuda wangu hapa Yerusalemu Judea Samaria na ulimwenguni kote In a few minutes He, the, the, the heavens opened and Jesus went back to heaven. Na kwa muda mfupi bingu zikafunguka na Yesu akapaa akaenda mbinguni. And then he sent his holy spirit for them to receive so that they received power. Na kisha akamtuma Roho Mtakatifu waweze kupokea nguvu ili ya kuweza kufanya ile kazi. So even though we're celebrating today, hata kama tunasherekea leo, I believe today is also an invitation day. Na pia ninaamini leo ni siku ya mwaliko. For each of us as believers, kwa kila mmoja wetu tuaminio, to surrender our all, A L L, our everything to God so he can fill us with his spirit and his power. Ili tuweze kujitoa kabisa ili Bwana atujaze na roho wake na nguvu zake. Because the whole purpose, remember God's purposes are not just for you and me, they're for the whole world. Kwa sababu kusudi la Mungu sio kwa sababu tu yetu mimi na wewe, lakini ni kwa sababu ya ulimwengu wote. He is planting us here to bring people into the kingdom but also to nurture them, to grow them, to disciple them. Na ndiyo maana Mungu anatupanda ili tukaweze kuwalea, wakaweze kukua na kukomaa. So may it be so. God bless each one of you and anoint everything you say, touch and do in this community. Na iwe hivyo, na Mungu aweze kutia mafuta chochote unachokifanya na kusikisema katika sehemu hii. Receive the anointing Phyllis. Receive pokea the anointing. upako, pokea upako, pokea upako huo. Amen. Amina. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen.